Hi, everyone. Welcome to the month of the rooster. It actually starts on the 8th. So I'm cutting it close <laughs> by doing this talk the day before. Um, but I just got back from Spain. I was just telling some folks um, about 18 or so hours ago. So if I'm a little groggy or saying wild things, um, just blame it on jet lag. <laughs> But um, we are getting ready to move into the deepest part of the fall season. As a reminder, you can always check back on previous talks on my YouTube page. Um, and I do encourage you to, if you missed August talk, um, I highly, highly recommend that you do go back to it in August because it is so useful to um, have that as a, a leverage. We can leverage off the energy of August moving into um, moving into the season of letting go. So here we are in the month of September. Uh, starts tomorrow. Uh, the rooster is a yin metal element, okay? Yin metal. So very different from the monkey. The monkey is yang metal. And yin metal is talking about like a precious piece of jewelry, you know, like a diamond. Or it can also be like a dagger. So there's something precise and sharp and disciplined and clear about this yin metal element. And we will be toggling back and forth a little bit between what happened in August as we move into September. We always want to understand the past, even if it's just a month ago, to understand how are we stepping into this season? How are we stepping into the new month? So as you're kind of watching um, the talk for September, I want you to be thinking about last month, you know, what were the highs, what were the lows, what conversations did you have, what events transpired unexpectedly or expectedly, um, what were some of the things that became clear to you, um, what were the things that you're still struggling with, these are all the things that you're going to be bringing with you into um, the month of September. September is the peak of the autumn season, this is the height and I know that it's strange because in Arizona, we're still above 100 degrees, but we are technically in the autumn season. And so remember what I said about August. August is like when the leaves are yellowing. They haven't quite fallen from the tree yet. It's not quite that fall fall, but you can start to see the physical manifestation of change happening, right? It's when the colors of the leaves begin to change. And so we start to feel those things in our bodies and in our mind and our spirit, but we're not quite ready to commit to the act of letting go yet, okay? We're just not ready. We have to get clarity. We have to do the work to understand what specifically is being asked of us in this particular year, in this particular season for us to let go. Well, now we're stepping into September. September is the act of letting go. That's why the theme is very much about the end is here. This is the moment of completion. This is the time of letting go. It's the time when we need to begin moving forward. And so when you've done your own contemplation or meditation in the last 30 or so days, um, it would be interesting if you want to put it in the chat box, um, what came up for you in terms of what do, I, what do I want to let go? And we'll be talking a little bit more about that as we move through um, you know, this talk. But in order for us to be in cooperation with the season and to be in alignment with where we're at, I think it's the season kind of begs us or invites us to be courageous to pull the trigger. You know, it can be as simple as I'm no longer going to eat gluten. <laughs> Maybe that's not so simple for some people, but, um, or it can be the hard things like I need to end that relationship or I need to move on from that job, you know, that, that no longer serves me. So there's a lot of, um, Oh, yep. Thank you, Karen, for sharing, doing lots of thinking about the future. So we want to talk about the nobleman stars. Obviously, um, September is the nobleman month for those who were born in the year of yang fire or yin fire. So you can kind of um, 
let go of the people that no longer resonate. Yeah, it takes a lot of courage to set those boundaries. So when you look at your Bazi chart, you're looking at the year pillar to see if you have the yang fire or the yin fire sign, or you can simply just look at if you were born in the years ending six or seven. So September is your nobleman month. The rooster sign is your nobleman month. And the other one that, it, that you can also calculate is to look at your Bazi chart and look at the day pillar to see if you were born on the yang fire day or yin fire day. <laughs> now, it is a nobleman month, but the challenging thing about this month, September, is it's extra special because it's going to clash against the rabbit year. So the rabbit and the rooster, they have a clash relationship. So if you've paid attention to your Bazi chart for some time, maybe you're observing it um, day by day, uh, like your daily stars, or you're paying attention to it month by month. So every September, when the nobleman is under clash like this, it means the nobleman is not going to perform as expected. Okay, that's the whole reasoning of the clash. It means that energetically speaking, the whole month of September, even for those people who don't have a clash this month, will feel the energy of the clash. Okay, that's just the meaning of the month. And so if, if it is your nobleman month, like, yes, your nobleman is still there, it's still going to show up, but it may not show up the way that you expected. So You'll have to stay flexible. You'll have to be open to the changes. Um, and so here's the thing. Changes are going to be more apparent, more volatile and extreme. Okay. That's just because the whole energy of the month really kind of triggers that, that dynamic movement. But that just simply means it's a fantastic time to pull the trigger on making those permanent changes that you want to see in your life. And I'm not talking about the little changes that you're going to fall back to again. No, 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 no. Th these are permanent changes that you want to make, or it's the changes that you can see a big progress beginning to happen in your life. It's kind of like when someone says, I want to move to Nashville or something like that. Well, the big change might be, I'm going to list my house for sale. Right. So that is the, the change that you're triggering in order for you to begin to see that progress, that action that's happening, that's going to take you to that next change. Or the permanent change could mean I am finally. I'm finally leaving this job so that I have the space to do something else. That is a permanent change. I'm making a career change. That's a permanent change. So these are the things to really think about um, in the month of September. Again, it's all about what you bring to the table. It may not be as dramatic for some people, but it could be for, for many. Um, also be very careful of small bones. I don't know where everybody went. I can't see your face. Okay, um, be careful of small bones because the rooster and the rabbit signifies like our fingers, wrists, your toes, your ankles, um, even at times the spine. So Madonna, um, actually when she was riding a horse on her birthday, it was a rooster and rabbit clash. So she hurt her, um, I think it's her lumbar bone, okay? I have a lot of yogis um, that have hurt their wrists or their ankles practicing yoga because of that rooster rabbit clash. Do you remember when I did the talk in June and I talked about the horse and the rat clash is really the lower extremities of the body from the hip all the way to the toes, which also includes all the organs associated with that, our bladder and our kidneys, um, and also the, the reproductive system. Well, the month of September really calls attention to the small bones of the body. So if you are an artist that work with your hands, you're a dancer, you're a yogini, a carpenter, um, a musician where you play with your fingers, you know, just really being more deliberate with your action. Take, take your time, be slow. I had a client one time who cut his finger. <laughs> um, they sewed it back but that was also in a rooster um, rabbit kind of clash, okay? Um, and the next thing is things may not go as planned, all right? Like I said, 
You may not have a clash this month, but you will still experience the clash. And when that does permeate, you know, it does come to your life. You're not going to panic. You're not going to like overthink it. You're just going to say, you know what? I'm part of the process. I'm part of the flow of the month. And so what what are the elements trying to show me? What is the universe trying to show me? And the clash, like I said, is an essential ingredient for creating new events in life, new experiences. And you can look at it as a purposeful redirection in your life, okay? So just bear that in mind. Um, for those who have the rabbit sign in their Bazi chart, so you'll have to look at this. If you're born in the year, month, day, or time of rabbit, anywhere in your four pillars, you kind of have a double clash going on, okay? So, but if you have multiple rabbits in your chart, then you may have a quadruple clash. I just had a Bazi session with a long-term client of mine who has a sextuplet chart clash. I don't even know if that's the right terminology, but he has three rabbit signs, okay? So three times two is six times the clash, okay? So this is very intense, all right? You really, really have to set yourself up in the best way possible, mentally, spiritually, and physically, um, so that you're strong enough, okay, to withstand that clash, however the element shows up in your life. Of course, we try to set ourselves up in the best way possible. Um, we can't will the clash away. We can't ignore and deny the clash. It is here. It's coming. And so the best sort of uh, armor, I would say, is to do a quick assessment, okay, of like, okay, where are the vulnerabilities in my life? You know, how's my relationship? How's my health? How's my finances? Work, communication, right? And you usually can tell very quickly the areas that need a little bit of work, you know, because that's at the forefront of your mind. And so whatever it is that comes to your mind right away, that's where I want you to pay attention to. How can I protect that? How do I put extra, you know, armor around that so it doesn't explode or it doesn't fall apart, doesn't break apart? Because clash is to break apart, right? And then now we're also at the height of the autumn season, the season of letting go. So that's going to be the area that's going to touch on your life to say, is this an area in your life that you should be letting go? Okay, so just think about that. Um, this is just a quick reminder. I have a, I don't know, 10 minute YouTube video um, for free to figure out how to do, how to derive your daily stars. Um, I'm going to reinitiate the daily posts starting tomorrow um, because I was traveling. And so that's going to go back up on Instagram tomorrow. Um, the one thing I want to talk about more this month is to, to call special attention to an energy called self penalty. And the self penalty does show up in the month of September. And this impacts directly those people who were born on the day of the rooster. So you're gonna have to look at your Bazi chart because there's no formula. You have to actually have a physical copy of your Bazi chart. Look at the day pillar and look at this, the bottom character and say, does it say rooster? If you have a rooster sign, that means the self penalty energy is gonna affect you this month. Now, I say that with a slight caveat because this is the rabbit year and the rabbit has a relationship to the rooster. So even for the people who may not necessarily have a rooster sign on their day, might also feel some of the impact of that self penalty. So what is self penalty? Self penalty is just what it means. It means self punishment or self sabotage. And so we have a lot of examples from, you know, psychological research, you know, to behavioral research on what self sabotage, self penalty means. But here are just some signs like self penalty in Bazi is is a hidden kind of energy. It's not something you share. It's it's kind of like um, when you think of clash. Clash is very open. It's loud. It's exposed. People see it. Oh, she moved. Oh, they traveled. Oh, they changed jobs. It's very very obvious. But a penalty is something you do in secret. And so think about all the things that you might be hiding, keeping in. There's a difference between being private 
and also hiding things in secret. And usually the things that we hide in the dark are the negative things that we don't want people to know. Maybe I feel shameful of something because I eat cupcakes at two in the morning. <laughs> That's why I can't lose weight. Or I only do things because I am always constantly reminded of the guilt that I wasn't there for this person. So all my action, I kind of mask it under this particular, you know, action, but really underneath it, it's driven by guilt. Okay. So that's self penalty. You're self punishing yourself. Nobody's doing anything to you. The universe is not out there to get you, but the element is instigating kind of, um, pushing out or or stimulating that aspect of our behavior even more. Um, doing things you know you're not supposed to. This is a conscious choice, okay, that you decide you're going to do anyway, even though you know you're not supposed to. These are things like, I know I shouldn't spend money I don't have, so I'm going to gamble. I know I shouldn't be looking at inappropriate pictures because I'm in a relationship. Um, I know I shouldn't be, you know, like cheating in my test results, but I didn't study, so I'm going to cheat. You know, these are conscientious choices that we do. And it's very similar to people who say, you know what, I know I shouldn't smoke, but I can't help it. So I'm going to smoke a cigarette anyway. So doing things, you know, you're not supposed to do deliberately ruining a good thing. Okay. So you can have all the momentum, all the good opportunities, right people in place, but you always find something wrong. <laughs> you find something to complain, something to sabotage, you know, and destroy a good thing. That is also a psychological behavior that translates into a behavioral um, outward behavior movement um, in, in, in your actions with yourself and with others. Refusing to ask or receive help is also a self-sabotaging behavior. Um, this can either be ego because, uh, no, I don't need help. I can do it on my own. Um, or there is a fear behind it. Okay. Fear. Um, I don't want to feel like I owe someone or I don't want to rely on someone else to help me. So I refuse to accept help. Again, that is a self-sabotaging kind of behavior, um, especially if you know that September is your nobleman month. So if you're sure nobleman month, even if it's a clash, it's always, we always want to say yes to help. Okay. Um, suddenly more kind of obsessive compulsive behaviors go on overdrive. Um, whether we're being nitpicky, you know, kind of micromanaging things, overthinking things, you know, all of these things are, are related to self-penalty. Obviously, with self-penalty, we are also, it may not be action-oriented, but it might be thought-driven, you know, that excessive self-criticism, the self-doubt and self-judgment that goes on and on and on and on. That's why sometimes when you meet people on the surface, you're like, wow, they're so confident, they're so put together, they have it all figured out. But you don't know in the darkness of their room, okay, in the privacy of their home, you don't know what actually goes on in their head, you know, over and over and over again. Because again, self-penalty is something that you hide, okay? You hide it even from the people that you that know you very well. Um, and also making excuses or excessive complaining. So these are just some things to pay attention to, all right? When we come into the month of September, um, we always say that self-penalty, there is no amulet, there is no feng shui cure, there is nothing. The only cure to this is your mind. OK, in order for you to be aware of this, to change your behavior, you have to have awareness. You have to learn more about yourself and understand what triggers um, these self-sabotaging behaviors. Bring it to light. Tell it to someone. You know what? When I get stressed out, I get up at two o'clock in the morning and I eat cupcakes, <laughs> you know, um, or, you know what, when I get stressed out, I do retail therapy and I put all I buy all these things and I put it on credit card. Bring it to the light. Tell it to your spouse, tell it to your best friend, how, you know, ask for help so that you don't go down to the bottom of the rabbit hole. It's so important at this time to really practice self-compassion with yourself. It's so easy to kind of spiral into that same negative pattern, especially if you have the tendency to have more of that self-sabotage in the mind. Okay. 
Um, work on self-empowerment. You know, we can change. I know that it's a very cliche thing to say that people don't change. Um, people don't change because they don't want to, but people can change when you want to. And so if you are aware of these behaviors and your mindset and you say, I want to be a healthier person, I want to be more productive, I want to be more loving, I want to be an example to my children, to my friends, that's the initial yes that you say to yourself. And with that, it empowers you to know that you can reframe your mindset. Um, and so you can replace these shameful acts, these guilty things with something a little bit more loving and more positive. Um, be humble, be humble and ask for help. One thing I've learned um, working with so many people over the years is how often people are surprised when they ask for help. They actually say, I had no idea how much people really wanted to help me. And just remember the times when someone came to you and asked you for help because they figured you would be the person that can help them. What an honor, right? What an honor to be like, oh my gosh, they thought of me, that I could be the right person to support them, to guide them, to lead them, to uplift them. It actually is such a beautiful exchange of just being humans, right? And so when you can replace your ego with humility to ask for help, you're not just gifting it to yourself, you're actually gifting it to the other person. Um, end perfectionism by removing the all or nothing mentality. I think it's a very, um, it's a very prevalent of our culture to kind of say like, well, if you're going to go this route, then you're just going to have to go all bonkers, you know, balls to the walls and that's it. Right. And it puts a lot of pressure. Sometimes it's unnecessary. Um, sometimes the creative flow of life is fluid, kind of takes you in different direction. Obviously, when you learn Bazi, you're here because you know that life is a fluid thing. You know, you take one crossroad, it leads you to another detour, and then it takes you to another crossroad. And so the desire for perfection, I have to have all the answers. I have to have everything figured out right now. It's just another self-sabotaging behavior. Um, I know we don't like the word but, but <laughs> when we're talking about negative self-talking, um, replacing it with the word but at the end is actually a good thing. So like I can say, gosh, I feel so fat, <laughs> but I am beautiful, but I am doing something about it. So I don't feel heavy. So I don't feel unhealthy, right? Gosh, I don't have my life figured out, but I am in the active motion of trying to figure it out, but I am asking for help, but I am doing something about it. So that's how we use, but in an, in a positive way, you need to be accountable. Okay. We're all adults. <laughs> and so our self-sabotaging behaviors um, can affect not just ourselves, but the people closest to us. Um, sometimes when you look at the Bazi chart of your spouse or your children, right. And you see that there's that self penalty in their chart, even though it doesn't, affect your chart, it still affects you anyway, because you know that it affects the people you love. And so if it does reside in your chart, just be accountable and have awareness around that. I think the key, um, the key thing is we just want to monitor our, our behaviors and feelings and thoughts, especially in the month of September. And I'm going to say this as a preview to October. October is going to be a very, very, very special month because October is going to have a relationship with 2024, the year of the dragon. And so, like I said, everything sets, you know, everything previous sets up for what's coming. So did you do your homework in August to get clear about the things that you need to let go? Yes or no, right? If the answer is yes, September, you got to do it. It's no longer procrastination period. It's no longer journaling about it and thinking about it and talking about it. No, it's the time to take action because what you do in September is going to be important and very critical as we move into the month of October because October is going to be a little preview, you know, like a little keyhole into the future, which is what's the future? 2024, the theme of 2024, right? And to have the information is to feel empowered because 
information as knowledge, right? We're not here to create our own self-sabotage, you know, to, to, to create more fear. No, we're learning about this because we want to set ourselves up for the best. And so monitor your feelings. How are you feeling? Where's your heart? Where's your mind? And then challenge those feelings um, and ask yourself, what is standing in the way between you and reaching the goal that you want to get to, whatever that is, six months goal, five-year goal, whatever. And then once you understand that, then you can develop better um, tips and tools, if you will, um, to keep you on track. So again, we are in the metal season. This is a time for the chest. Uh, in Chinese medicine, this is related to our lungs. That's why there's a lot of um, like upper respiratory thingies happening right now, starting in August, because that is the season of the lungs. So there's a lot of cold, bronchitis, cough, asthma, allergies, all the things. So do what you need to do from a health perspective to boost your immune system. Um, that's one way. The second thing is I also want you to really focus on the breath. Okay, I talked a little bit about this in August, but what do I mean by that? I'm 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 not just like talking about your active breathing. Okay, I'm really talking about the breath of life in your life. You know, and there could be areas in your life where the flow of breath is long and expansive because it's safe, it's protected, it's comfortable. But then there could be areas in your life where your breath is shallow and tight and fast, you know, where we're hyperventilating, you know, not really breathing. We feel suffocated. We feel like we can't breathe. You see, sometimes it's the relationship. Sometimes it's about my career. Sometimes it's about my health, whatever that is. I want you to really pay attention to the breath in all those areas of your life and really paying attention um, to this. Okay. This is really, really huge. Um, another thing with the, the metal element in TCM is the skin. Okay, so sometimes the fall is also when people develop rashes, um, like eczema or psoriasis or something going on weird with their skin. Remember, the skin is the largest breathing organ in your body. So we also want to pay attention to that, as well as all the orifices, so those are ears and our nose. That's why people get ear infection, you know, sinuses, that kind of weird stuff. Um, but yin metal is also related to our teeth teeth and our nails, okay? So if you have teeth problems, wisdom teeth, I already know three clients that needed to get wisdom teeth extraction and they're adults, like way past 18 years old. Um, pay attention to your teeth, okay? Grinding of the jaws, are you stressed? You know, what's going on with that? Um, and also the nails. Your nails tells you a lot about your health in terms of the coloring. Um, Usually in the fall for me, I actually don't do any manicure, um, acrylic or otherwise gel. I just kind of go back to my natural nails because I personally want to pay attention to the coloring of my nail beds um, because it tr it's very similar to your tongue. <laughs> if you do like tongue assessment in Chinese medicine, it tells you where what is the state of your body. And so these are just some things to, to just pay attention to, okay, in your body. And if there's some um, bit of imbalance, then it's a good time, okay, to start implementing proper actions. All right. So August was the preparation. September is a time to let go. You know, even when we talk about the metal element in the five element cycle. It's always kind of weird. It, it, it's always one of the things that students struggle with. Like how do how do we think about metal? And you know, in Western astrology, they don't they don't have metal, they have wind. But in Chinese astrology, we don't have wind because wind is wood. Okay. We have metal. So metal is often kind of like the weird one that we can't grasp. Okay. But think of metal like this is it is birthed from the soil of the earth, right? It's where you extract the minerals from the soil. It's where you extract the gems, right? When you mine the gemstones, you mine it from the earth. Metal is like the nuts and bolts. It's all the things that kind of, you know, like chains, you know, the links that kind of keeps everything together. Think of metal that way. And also metal um, the metal element also represents the father trigram, the patriarch. 
the heaven, okay? So earth is the mother, okay? Metal is the father. So there is an emphasis around the male, the masculine energy of this time. Think about that. Because you look at nature, right? And the leaves are starting to come down. That's a very masculine energy to let go, even though it looks so subtle and kind of like dying, you know, kind of like a lull. But there's so much energy, right, that has taken place huh, for that the leaves to, to come apart, to fall from the trees and come down to the earth. And so it's the same thing with each and every one of us. It's demanding a lot of energy from us to do the same thing. Um, but to honor the father, okay? Whether you have a good relationship or not with the father, that's an invitation to make peace, to heal, all right? To give thanks, whatever that might be um, related to the father. Um, so we are now fully into the yin energy, right? August was the transition from yang to yin. Now we are fully in yin cycle, okay? The second half of the year. Um, remember yin metal, it means the diamond. Look at the words that I put here. I say yin metal is like the diamond in the rough. Fire and brimstone, it's the metal under pressure. Think about that, right? You look at that piece of beautiful diamond or that beautiful piece of jewelry. Do you know how much like banging, melting and boiling and chiseling that all required in order to create something beautiful. So you and I are like diamonds, okay? But in order to be like diamonds, we will be put under pressure, okay? So don't fight this season, okay? Don't be afraid of it. Say yes, say it, embrace it. Go through the fire in order for you to be chiseled into something more beautiful. You know, the tension of holding everything in, right? We don't, we refuse to let go. It really creates knots in our lives and it impedes the flow of energy. It blocks us. And that's why we feel like we have a heavy heart. We're bogged down, okay? So that's that's not what we're aiming for. That's why we don't want to hold everything in. We want to hold, like push everything out, okay? Um so loosen the death grips. I don't know, some of you, if you've had the Bazi sessions with me, I, sometimes I've talked to you about the death grips in life, right? What is the death grip in my life? It's, I have to have this house. I have to have this career. I have to have this food. <laughs> I have to have this whatever idea, value, thought, person, right? Addiction, whatever that is, that is a grip in your life. September is a time when we have to begin to trust in the process to open our hands and allow those things to fall. And whatever remains in our hands is supposed to stay with us into the next season, okay? So loosen up the death grips of your life. That is your homework. That's your challenge. Here's the list from last month. Uh, I'm not going to go through it here. But this is just to remind you, you know, of the, the steps that you needed to do last month in order to get clarity on what it is that you need to let go. Because here we are, it's time to remove the excess in life, okay? In our physical body, whether that's actual weight um, or from your physical environment, like there's a lot of people going through, suddenly being pulled to like declutter, you know, they kind of go through their closet and go to goodwill, they're moving things around, they're just feeling compelled to make some kind of change. Um, and also, but this is the physical, maybe this can be your schedule, you know, maybe it's removing all the excess things in your schedule, all the social gathering, all the mundane things, right? Really evaluate that. Um, removing the negative and unproductive thoughts and behaviors and feelings and people, okay? Um, whoever joined us needs to mute, okay? Um, goals that no longer serve you, okay? There's some goals that are just stale, you know? But, oh, but I've had it since I was 16. <laughs> like, um, does it still apply to you? Maybe not, okay? Um, paradigms that no longer fit your lifestyle or your values, like, does it reflect the person that you are today, right? Fear of the future or uncertainty of things. I think we're at a point in our lives, 
or at least I hope so, in a stage in our life where we know that uncertainty is just a part of life, right? And so hopefully there are no more blockages about that. Um, and to not live in fear of uncertainty of things. It, it, it creates a lot of unease and discomfort. That's normal. But it shouldn't hinder us from living fully day to day just because we don't know what the future holds. Um, time to let go of any regrets, okay, or past mistakes. Um, even if it's just regrets or past mistakes of the last six months, okay? Um, think about that, all right? Um, doing the same thing over and over again, telling the same story over and over again. I have had clients for over 10 years and we would still be talking about the same thing. And it's like, mm -mm, it's time to pull the plug, pull the cord. Okay. The same story, it needs to transform into something else. Okay. So if you know that that is no longer part of the identity and the person that you want to be right now and in the future, it's time to let that story go, that hurt, that experience, that event, okay, or doing the same thing over and over again. Anything or anyone that's hindering your progress and freedom in life, they need to go, okay? And basically anything that came into surface last month, if you did your homework properly, okay? So I really am so curious to hear from you guys individually. You can just send me an email or put it in the chat box. Um, what came to you, okay? This is so interesting to see um, kind of like where everybody is at, you know, spiritually, mentally, and physically. Um, you know me, I like poems and um, I'm into haikus these days because I've been writing haikus myself. And I found these haiku poems for fall. Um, that I thought maybe I'd share them with you and you can pick and choose perhaps one you can meditate with and you can memorize um, because to me, they they kind of really embody the spirit of autumn, um, talking about the gentle breeze and the color of red and gold, you know, the dying season and the long night, you know, the nights are long, um, nature's masterpiece, you know, nature takes a sigh the air lets out a deep breath and we reach for blankets. And so these are just some the some of the themes that I want you to, to kind of incorporate or embody in your day to day. OK, especially in those moments where um, you're taking care of your yourself, or whether you're taking a bath, going for a walk, um, reading a book, something like that. OK. All right. Um, there's a new event coming out next month in person only. It's a Qigong uh, five Elements workshop that I'm doing with Master Sarah Anderson. She has over 30 years experience in um, martial arts and Qigong, as well as yoga and many, many other things. And we're going to be focusing on the winter season to help prepare our bodies and our mind and spirit for all the holiday festivities. So if you're interested in that, um, again, registration for the Bazi course in January is now open if you're interested. Let's look at feng shui, switching gears. All right, the energy has moved and OMG, the Northwest sector of our house is in trouble because why? We already know that the misfortune star is in the Northwest for 2023, the whole year. So hopefully you already have a six metal rod wind chime in place there, but now you got to double up. You have to put the six metal uh, coins um, also in the Northwest because the sickness star is visiting. So the sickness star is going to pair up with the misfortune star. So this is very problematic. It creates a lot of friction, hardship, discomfort, disharmony, okay, in the mind and the body. Um, and then here in the South, where we have the misfortune star number five taking a visit, because the small number is the small numbers are the visiting stars. So we want to make sure we have our six metal rod wind chime in the south sector. This is going to disturb our stomach um, or the earth element, um, which is the stomach. So we may start to feel goofy in our stomach, um, digestion, um, you know, uh, stomach health. Um, but also earth is related to worries. Okay. So are we ruminating? overanalyzing, you see this is a self-sabotage, 
uh, behavior that's coming up. So make sure and ask yourself what is what room is in the south, what room is in the northwest, and incorporate those proper cures accordingly. Okay, we talked about feng shui, obviously feng shui in real estate. Give me a call. We have the period nine feng shui workshop happening in November, which will also be recorded. Um, it will be conducted in person and on Zoom. Um, in May of next year, we're going to have um, the feng shui course again for those interested in getting the certification. Um, and then I will see you again in October 3rd, the month of the doggy. All right. Such an important time uh, for that. And that's it. That's the month of the rooster. I will take questions. If anybody have questions, let me see, <laughs> Taylor. Letting go of relationships, ooh, okay. So there's a lot of relationship letting go, people. Yep, cock a doodle too. <laughs> so um, if you hold a $50 gift redemption from me, just be reminded that they expire at the end of this year, December 31st. Um, so it's a good idea to sign up for your Bazi update or a full Bazi session um, before the end of the year to make sure we're all in alignment. Otherwise, I will see you next month or see you sooner than that. Okay, if you have any questions, I'll stay on for like two more minutes. Thank you. Bye, Teresa. Nobleman is always good, even when it's tough. Okay, someone asks is, if rooster is a nobleman, how do we know it is good? I have so many examples of nobleman. Nobleman is always a good thing, okay? Even when we are in trouble, okay? Um, because nobleman is considered the best element. So when we have it, we want it. <laughs> Okie dokie. Have a beautiful rooster month starting tomorrow. Bye. Bye-bye.